our Father God, we stand here before your very holy presence. Lord, we recall the words of the psalmist when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And so, Lord, we want to dedicate this Saturday at 2 o'clock service, this very special service today, as we dedicate all the other services in this church. At the 5 o'clock on Saturday and the Sunday morning, two services from today onwards and every weekend. Lord, that you will bless this gathering, that you will lead us by your Spirit to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, Lord, that in all these services, Lord, that there will always be anointed worship. Lord, would you inherit and be enthroned upon the praises of your people. Lord, by your Spirit, would you lead us to know what it means to enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. And Lord, we lay no confidence in the flesh. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you guide each one of us by your Spirit to enter the Holy of Holies, to your very presence itself. Your very presence where there is fullness of joy. And Lord, as we engage with you, as we connect with you, Lord, we pray for breakthroughs in our lives. Lord, we pray for salvations in all our services. We pray for deliverance. We pray for healings. We pray for breakthroughs. We pray for answered prayers for every need that we will receive mercy and grace in every circumstance and see every situation of everyone that comes into these services. And Lord, would you do a special blessing upon this Saturday at 2 o'clock service as you will do in all the other services. We ask that you continually guide us that there will always not only be anointed worship, there will be the anointed altar where we will hear the words of God. That you anoint every speaker to speak the oracles of God, to bring your word in season. And we pray for the anointed altar asking of you, Holy Spirit, to till the grounds of every heart on sight and online to respond to your word, your living word. Lord, we are living in precarious times, perilous times. And we just ask for that anointing, that strength, whenever we gather in on-site or online to encounter you, to find you as our strength, our portion, our tower of refuge, that we will learn to continually draw deeper into you even as we have worship in the secret place of the Most High. So Lord, we thank you that there will always be the blessing as we bless you. We bless you, Father God. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Holy Spirit. Dedicating this service and all the services to come for your glory, O Father, for you, Jesus, Lord, to be exalted high and lifted up and draw every heart to yourself. And we ask of you, Holy Spirit, to intervene in this service and every Saturday service and every service in this church for the glory of the Father, for the exaltation of the Lord Jesus, as we commend this to you with thanksgiving and with praise in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Can you just give me a wave? It's so good to see all of you here today. Thank you for joining us, whether you are in this sanctuary, uh, on site, you know, or online. We want to extend a warm welcome to you, especially if you are here for the very first time. It is our privilege to be able to host you, and we are so glad that you are here with us today. We hope you will be refreshed through our service. Before we begin, we do have a few announcements, so let me uh, take us through them. First up, we have a marriage uh, dialogue that is coming up and this is organised by our marriage uh, ministry. Okay, so this dialogue is about balancing the principles of leaving and cleaving with honouring our parents. Okay, so sometimes this can be quite a tricky issue like how do you uh, effectively uh, leave and cleave while honouring your parents, right? So who is this course for? It is for both married couples 
as well as parents with married, married couple children. Okay, or if you are getting married soon, or if you are a parent of children that are getting married soon, then we want to encourage you to come for this course. If you can come together, all the better. Alright, so this course is happening on 24th of July. It's a Saturday on site at the chapel. So please sign up as per the details on screen. Our next announcement is for preparation for parenting. And these are for couples who are expecting their first child, but perhaps unsure of what to expect. And I can tell you that I just had my fourth child and I'm still learning. Okay, so my husband and I are conducting this course. Uh, so if you are in this category of new parenting, please join us as we talk about things like building your marriage as new parents, things to look out for and parenting together, what that entails. So this is happening on 12th and 19th of July on a Monday via Zoom. Okay, so you can also sign up through the details on screen. Some on-site reminders before the worship uh, segment. Please remember to keep your mask on at all times. No singing. And remember to observe safe distancing, especially within this century. Alright, so everyone, let's just arise right now and ready our hearts to worship the Lord together. Let's stand and commit this service unto the Lord. Our good and gracious Father, we welcome you here in our midst. We are so glad, God, that we are able to gather as one body together. Prepare our hearts today as we render worship and praise unto you. God, you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. And we come prepared, ready to worship you. Church, welcome to the house of the Lord. Let's also welcome our Lord in this place. Let's clap unto our God and King. We celebrate you, Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. For you alone are the beautiful one, worthy of all of our praises.
worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for reminding us this day as we come into your presence that there is none like you, the beautiful one, awesome, mighty, wonderful God that you are. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We sing of the cross. We sing of the blood of Christ. We sing of the new life that he has won over for us. And indeed, we sing that you alone are the beautiful one, worthy of all our praises. So in this place, Lord, as, even as we remember who you are, Lord, we surrender ourselves afresh to you. We are your beloved children, and you are our Abba Father. So here in this place, as we continue to worship you, Lord, we surrender our lives to you, singing of your goodness in our lives. Come, Lord, and have your way in our hearts, in this place, for we long to draw near to you. We long, Lord, to see you face to face. Yes, Lord, come and touch us once again. Come and transform us once again as we worship you, offering up our lives to you. To the one thing true, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus made me pray. We worship you alone, Lord. Who makes the sun to rise and brings the earth new life in every being? Jesus, it is you. Who turns the day to night and watches me as I begin to dream, Jesus, it is you. Who brings me food for my table? Who cares for all of my needs? Who walks the road with me?
look to you, Lord. Hear the cry of our hearts for more of you, Lord, this day.
And here in this place, even as we've surrendered our lives to you, Lord, we continue to declare that you alone are our God, that you alone are God who reigns and who rules. Hallelujah. Be magnified, Lord, in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
declare that our God reigns and that there is no one like you, God. You are our hope, our help, our strength and our wisdom. Lord, we declare that you reign over our families, our homes, our lives, our jobs. You reign over every situation, every obstacle, every uncertainty. And we know, God, you are always at work. You are always working here and beyond. Even when we cannot see, you are at work. And so, God, we rest in your might. We rest in your presence. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, please be seated. Let us now prepare ourselves for the Holy Communion. Would you join me to peel off the first layer for the bread? Let us hold up the bread together and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the bread that symbolizes your body that was broken for us, that by your bodily death, Jesus, in your obedience to the cross, we have salvation, we have bodily healing, we have life abundant. We thank you, Jesus, that by your death, you gave us eternal life and we partake of this bread right now in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, now let us peel off the second layer for the cup. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this cup. This cup that symbolizes your blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. Because of your shed blood, we have been fully redeemed and sin no longer has a hold on us. Thank you for bearing our sin and shame and for giving us victory and freedom in your precious name. We partake of this cup together now to celebrate this gift of life that you have given to us. Church, let us partake together. Let us now continue in this posture of worship and let us prepare our hearts before we give our tithe and our offerings. Let us pray. Our Lord and Saviour, we thank you today that every good gift comes from our Father God and we have so much to thank you for. In gratitude and in love, we render back to you all the blessings that you have endowed upon us and we bless you with our tithes and with our offerings. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Church, for the different ways that you can give to the Lord, please refer to the screen. You can see that you can mail in through checks, do a bank transfer or pay now. Or for those of you who are at service uh, with us, you may drop your offering into the box on your way out. Okay, right now, it is my privilege to invite our senior pastor, Dan Fu, who will lead us in a congregational prayer for our new children's pastor, Pastor Joseph Liu. Okay, uh, it gives me great pleasure. Uh, you know, it, as what Pastor Perley has prayed, the Lord is the God of seasons. Uh, in the children's church, uh, in the earlier days, it was uh, led by our pastor Daniel Cole. Those days, it was known as Sunshine Hour. Then it was led by our pastor Evelyn, and then our pastor Jack. And then now in this new season, uh, we have a new children's pastor, Pastor Joseph Liu and his wife, Ivy. And uh, we want to pray for them as they take on uh, this task and responsibility in this church. Why do we all stand all right, and stretch forth our hands as we dedicate uh, Pastor Joseph Liu uh, to the Lord. And so, Father God, we thank you as we stand here in your very presence, remembering that you're the God of the seasons. You determine times and seasons. And now for the children, should we commit our brother Joseph to you and ask the Lord that you'll fill him afresh to the knowledge of your will in increasing spiritual understanding and wisdom. Even as it hits your call to come on board full time for the ministry as children's pastor. Lord, we ask for a fresh anointing of your spirit to come upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel 
and the knowledge of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord to be upon Him, even as He shepherds the entire children's church, even as He comes alongside the adults and the teens in the sirens, uh, even as He shepherds them, Lord, that You will help Him to be creative, to have Your downloads, to shepherd the entire church, so that on the lips of the children, You will ordain praise to silence the enemy so that He'll be your instrument to provide spiritual leadership for the entire children's church, to disciple the children, to be priests and kings, so that through them, Lord, they'll be instrumental in helping their parents together to establish their own family altars. And through them, oh Lord, through their lives, that they will be your salt and your light in the schools where they go to and in the friends that they interact with. And that they will be your witnesses as empowered by your Spirit even to the ends of their world. So we pray that you bless Joseph. We ask for all your grace to abound towards him so that he will have all sufficiency in all things to abound in this good work as the children's pastor. We pray that you strengthen his marriage with Ivy and watch over his son and daughter as over his daughter-in-law and son-in-law and the grandchild. We pray that you watch over all their coming in and going out, all their rising up and lying down, that you sanctify them, you sanctify him in particular by the life and power of the blood of the Lamb, by the life and power of the living Word of God and the life and power of the Spirit of life. So we bless our dear brother, we entrust him to you, we pray for a new wineskins in this new season in the entire children's church. There will arise a children, a mighty army to the glory of your name to fulfill your end time purposes even through BBTC for the larger church in Singapore and even for the world. We commit him to you with thanksgiving and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Let's t- yeah. welcome him as our new children's pastor. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much, SP. You know, as a youth, I actually served with then Uncle Joseph, and he was always so energetic, so dynamic, so encouraging, and I'm so excited to see more of him in the days to come. Church, let us do our scripture meditation together right now. We will read the reference, followed by the verse and the reference at the count of three. Okay, one, two, three. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.19. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. 2 Peter 1, 19. Thank you, Church. It is now my pleasure to welcome to the pulpit my boss and friend, Pastor Lo Kok Guan, who will speak to us today on I want to grow, but how? Pastor Kok Guan. Good evening, church. Thanks, Pastor Furley. We have the same boss, and he's on the throne. Always, always. It's a privilege to be here to share with God's Word today. And uh, the theme for this month is the lessons from Second Peter. Lessons from Second Peter. And uh, Pastor Darren last week shared with us from Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 11, the knowledge of our faith. He talks about the gift of our faith and the effort of our faith, and the confirmation of our faith. Today, we're going to move on to verse 12. And, uh, but first, let me begin with a question. And the question is, now how many of you would like to continue to grow in the Lord? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, we're doing recording. It's better to raise hands now. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm sure, I'm sure you are here on site, and even those watching online, your answer will be a yes. That's why you are here. You want to grow. But the question is, how can we be sure that we are still growing in the Lord? If you are not sure, then what happened might be that we might miss it somehow along the way. And today's topic is, I want to grow. I want to grow. But how? But how? Is it more Bible study? All right, make sure you don't read it upside down like this little boy. Oh, is it? Pray more and make sure you pray with a smile. Or scripture, meditation, and make sure you don't fall asleep. Or some say, worship, worship. (laughs) Yeah. Now, I really want to grow. I really want to grow. 
But how? But how? The Apostle Peter in 2 Peter tells us three things that we can do that can help us to grow. But first, let's talk to the Lord and ask God to speak to us, shall we? Take this moment just, whether you are on site or online, talk to the Lord and say, God, teach me. Teach me from your word this day. Just between you and the Lord, just tell the Lord, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. And then pray for me and ask God to speak through me. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can come before you. Now as your servant dearly loved by you, speak for your words. May the words that come out from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. Open our eyes to behold wonderful truths of your word and help us not just to be hearers but doers as well so that we will bring you the glory that is due your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Now, Second Peter. The book of Second Peter is written by Peter. And he was a fisherman, an apostle, a disciple. He called himself the servant of the Lord. This was the last letter he wrote, written uh, when he received reports that there were false teachers in the churches in Asia Minor. Some started to question about the second coming of Christ. So, Peter wrote this to address some of these questions and also counter some of the false teaching. Peter asked us to focus on the need for the knowledge of our, Je- our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the word knowledge appears at least 16 times in three chapters of 2 Peter. That is the key word. And the key verse, I believe, is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, where he reads, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him, refers to Jesus, who called us to His own glory and excellence. Now Peter, a man who walked with Jesus, failed in his walk, returned to the Lord, and now he received the divine power that is also available for us today. He's definitely one man that we want to learn from. And in this letter, he shared with us three keys that can help us to grow in the Lord. And these three keys are remember the revealed word, experience the living word, and anticipate the prophetic word. With that, let's move on to the first one. Remember the revealed word. With that, allow me to read to you. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. Though you know them and are established in the truth that you have, I think it's right. As long as I'm in this body to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that by putting off my body will be soon. As our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me, I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. Peter begins with this word or conjunction or linking word, therefore. Because what Peter had just shared with them in the earlier verses was so important that he had to remind them again. He used these three words in yellow. Remind, reminder, recall. If, and in fact, he gave us two reasons why these reminders are necessary. First, the church needs to be established or stand firm in the truth. It is not just the right thing to do, but it is God thing to do. Because once Peter was um, corrected by Jesus, and Jesus said to Peter, Peter, when you turn back, strengthen your brothers, strengthen your brothers. That's what he was doing. In fact, the word strengthen in Greek has the same root word as the word established. Established. It's the same word. And it's in participant, part, participant tense. What do I mean? In other words, it's ongoing. So keep on standing firm. Keep on standing firm. Keep at it. Keep at it. Second reason is Peter's days are few. This is not just Peter's last letter, but likely his last words. He wrote that 
God has made it clear to him that his time was up. Now, the word put off means to remove or to leave, to leave his body. Now, the word body is the same word as tabernacle. The idea of a tent, a temporal tent, that we are not here to stay. We are only here for a moment. Not only that it will be soon, but Jesus told him how he would die. In John, Jesus told him that Peter would die a similar death like him. History tells us that Peter was crucified upside down on the cross. Peter's days were numbered. No wonder in verse 15, Peter said he wanted to make every effort to remind the churches so that after his departure, they might be able to recall what God has revealed to them. Often, it is not that we do not know. We know a lot, but sometimes we forget. We all need reminders so that we will not forget the revealed word of God. Chuck Sundor put it this way, when it seems that that's all, that's all there is, remember all you have in Him. Now, as I get older, uh, I realize that my memory fails us. Years ago, I could remember or memorize chunks of scriptures. It gets tougher and tougher now a day. Recently, you know, I watched a documentary about dementia. If you ask me when was it, I cannot remember. <laughs> but I still remember that day I wrote in my journal, Lord, let this never happen to me, such that I will forget what you have done for me. May the Lord help us so that we will always remember what God has done for us and what He has spoken to us. For me, one way to help me to remember is to keep a journal. I've shared this a couple of times at the pulpit, you know, to just um, talk about the importance of keeping a journal. Allow me to remind you again. There are four questions often I ask myself or ask the Lord when I do my quiet time. And the first is, what can I thank God for? Why can I thank God for? We thank God for Brother Joseph who stepped up and then had to be the children pastor. You know, we thank God for um, our brothers and sisters who are serving, you know, online, even on site, so that you know, the service you know, can be used by God to minister to many. We thank God for all this. Or perhaps what is God saying to you or to me from the Holy Word or even from the message today? Write them down, write them down. Or what have you learned about God today? God is faithful. God is gracious. God is kind. What other questions you might have? If God knows everything, why don't we come to God with questions? For me, it will be how could I just how could I how can I just con, how can I continue to journey with the young people and do it better? Now, in June or December, you know, I will take some time to then read through my journal. Uh, why June and December? Because I was a teacher. It was semester break. So it depends on your schedule. But for me, it's June and December. It was then where the Lord rem remind me of the journey I've taken with the Lord for the past half a year. So brothers and sisters, how about you? How about you? You see, the Word of God is perfect. The Word of God is trustworthy. It's right, it's radiant, it's pure, it's firm, it's more precious than gold, sweeter than honey. If we have such a precious Word of God with us and then we miss it, we really miss it. It is the Word of God that a servant is won. It is the Word of God where there is great reward. Whether it is to shun evil or to pursue righteousness, the Word of God will be our guide. So, the question I have for you today is, what can you do? Or what can we do to remember what God has revealed to us, His precious and perfect Word of God. There are many, many ways. Keep a journal, a monthly reflection, or perhaps scripture meditation. Try different ways to help you to remember. For example, you know, we're familiar with this um, hint from the navigators where I talk about the need to hear the Word of God, read the Word of God, study the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God, and most important of all, to do the Word of God. When we do that, it helps us to remember. 
pray the word of God. You know, just take the scriptures and then pray the word of God. That also help us to remember. Listen to the message again. Need not this message. You know, there's so many sermons, you know, that are available. Take time to listen to them again. And finally, whatever that you have learned, teach it in your cell group, in any platform, share with people who also are interested in the Word of God. Find different ways. And as you continue to do so regularly, you will realize that you grow, that you grow. Now again, the question is, what are you doing to help you to remember what God has revealed to you? What has God been saying to you in your quiet time? Is it your walk, your ministry, your work, your businesses, your family, your health? Or perhaps you have not been doing your quiet time. No condemnation, but perhaps God is saying it's time for you to spend some time with Him. So, brethren and sisters, Whatever you do, find ways to help you to remember what God has revealed to you. That's how we can continue to grow. What else? That brings us to the second point, and that is we need to experience the living word. A man went to extract his wisdom tooth. During the surgery, the dentist asked, do you have any allergy or concern? Uh, the man replied anxiously, ah, doctor, I'm a nurse, I'm a dentist, you know. I'm a bit scared, you know, because this is my first time extracting my wisdom tooth. Then the dentist replied, don't worry, you know, you're not alone. This is also my first time. I hope, you know, that really uh, helps, you know, but certainly experiences count. What's more spiritual experiences? With that, that brings us to the text and then we're going to look at, at the country and just get you to read together with me. One, two, Three, for we do not follow cleverly devised myth that we make known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice borne from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Thanks for reading. Peter shared with us that what he has just told them were not myths because myths at the time were common because the Romans and the Greeks you know, would use stories to just explain their dealings with their gods. So the false teachers are saying even the power of God, the coming of Lord Jesus Christ, they were all myths. Don't believe in them. Now, it will be silly for Peter to believe in some myth and then die for it. And he was not the only one. He used the pronouns we, we. Who are the we? The example Peter gave tells us the we refers to Apostle Peter, James and John. The transfiguration on the holy mountain. The incident was recorded in Matthew, Mark and Luke. Peter, James and John were the witnesses. Jesus told them not to tell anyone before his resurrection. They obeyed. It was then, after the resurrection, three of them would have told Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it was written down for us. It was an experience that Peter, James, and John would never forget. To see Jesus in glory and honour must have been an experience. To hear God's book from heaven must have been an experience. To witness Jesus talking to Moses and Elijah must have been an experience. Eyes to see what is to come, the second coming of Jesus. He ears to hear from the Father that this is my son, my beloved son. And the best part is they were with Jesus right there when it happens. Now church, the word of God comes alive. When Moses and Elijah representing the law and the prophets, the Old Testament that talks about the Messiah. The Messiah has come. No wonder Peter put it in 2 Peter 1.19. Because of this experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. No wonder John wrote, 
the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth, the living Word. Not some form of myth or something that they make up, it happened right before their eyes. After that incident, I believe life was never the same again. Isn't it true, my brothers and sisters, when God came true for us, we grow. We grow in our faith in God. You see, usually I um, do devotion with my children at night, and I will, I will end with this question. What have you learned today? And the answers will tell me whether they caught it or I miss it. And uh, I remember there was one night I felt very burdened because as a father, I was just thinking, you know, there's so much I want to share with them. But there's one thing, even as a father, I wish to, but I cannot give it to them. And that is my personal journey with the Lord. What do I mean? You see, my children had to experience God for themselves. The God who protects the God who provides, the God who comforts, the God who corrects, the God who encourages, and the God who enables, the God who will be with us in good times and not so good times. Even church, you have to experience God for yourselves. They won't be able to fully comprehend what it was like for me, those precious moments where God was with me on the first day of my work. When God was with me when I was promoted. When God was with me on my wedding. When God was with me when they were born. When God was with me when God calls me into full-time ministry. And of course, not so good times as well when I was hospitalized. When my grandparents passed away. When I lost my colleagues and my students because of an earthquake. Last week, I was standing somewhere here and then to worshipping the Lord. Suddenly, I felt very sad when we sang that phrase, when the earth shook. The thoughts of the Maokei earthquake came to mind. For those who are not aware, I lost some of my colleagues and my students um, in view of uh, because of an uh, earthquake in Mount Kingabalu. I started tearing when the faces of my colleagues and my students just flashed right before me my eyes, one after the other, one after the other. After the service, I look at the post in the Facebook. I realize that that next day, the last Monday, was the day where the accident happened six years ago. It was then I realized that God was preparing me for the death anniversary of my colleagues and my students. I experienced the comfort of God. I must confess that I forgot I've forgotten about it, but the Lord remembers. The Lord remembers. Such painful experiences would have been worse without the Lord's comfort, even before I saw the post. Now, church, our God is for real. He's for real. He is. We need to experience it for ourselves, Christ, the living Word. So the question I have for you, the second question is, are you or have you experienced the reality of God recently? Not three years ago, not five years ago. I'm talking about the experience of God being there with you recently. Now, how has it been for you so far? Good times? Not so good times? Has your world been affected because of the COVID situation? How about your businesses? How about your family? How about your children? Is there someone unwell at home? Or your health is not doing too good? Your children no longer walk with the Lord. God promised that He will never leave you nor forsake you. He means it. He does. And He's revealed right now, on site and online. He has, He is, and He will be with you. He means it. And when that happens, He encourages us to press on in growing in the Lord. But we need to always remember the review word. We must experience the living word. That's how we grow. Is that all? One more. 
one more. And that one more has to happen inside us. That brings us to the last point for the day. We need to anticipate the prophetic word. A pregnant mother wanted to prepare her little daughter for the newborn baby. So she told her, May, 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 we are going to have a new baby to play with. The daughter asked in anticipation, where? And the mother replied, in my stomach. Then the mother, the girl looks puzzled and asks, oh, is it a good baby? Um, the mother said, yes, of course. And then the girl said, then why did you eat him up? <laughs> anticipation is great only if it makes sense to us. It doesn't make sense to the girl. But for us, we need to know what we believe in. That's why Peter continued to explain to us what we are to anticipate in the coming days. Verse 19 tells us that, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you would do well to pay attention as to a lamp um, shining in the dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scriptures come from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Peter moved on to talk about the prophetic word. He asked us to pay attention, pay attention. There's a sense of anticipation of what is to come. Something is going to happen, something to look forward to. And then he paints for us a picture. Now I want you to imagine with me, imagine with me, there was a, there was a lamb in a dark place. It was dark. And you're looking at the lamb, paying attention to it, what, waiting in anticipation for dawn to come. And, and when that happens, interestingly, you realize there's a morning star that rises, not from outside, but from inside your heart. Now, when I first read this, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. First, we light a lamp in a dark place so that we can see the things around us, not the lamp. Nobody looking at the lamp and the, and the lights you know, now, because we are looking at everywhere except the lamp. Second, when day dawns, it would be the sun that we would expect to see. But we saw a bright morning star. And not above, but within. Not outside, but inside. So what was Peter trying to say? The truth is, the lamb here refers to the Word of God. God's Word is a lamb to our feet and a light for our path specifically the prophetic word that Jesus is coming again in power. And the dark place refers to the fallen world that we live in today. That is the dark place. It's a picture of a very cold, very deep tunnel underground. And, and in this underground tunnel, there was this lamp shining brightly. And you're looking at the lamp. You're looking at the Word of God in this fallen world. And then the day dawn will be the day of our Lord's coming. Then who is that morning star? Revelation 22 verse 11 tells us that Jesus is the morning star. So what Peter is trying to say is, pay attention, pay attention. Wait in expectation, you know, for an, an anticipation for what God has said in His Word. The Lamb, focus on the Word in this dark world. And, and to wait for the day to come. Hold fast to the Word while living in this fallen world because God has promised us that Jesus will come again. And when Jesus comes again, this is what is going to happen. You will see Jesus and then you must ask yourself, in your heart, is there a morning star that rises from your heart? Such that when you see Jesus and you look at your heart, you will say, Hey, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I've been looking for. Jesus, the morning star, rises in my heart, appears right in front of me. There was this anticipation, something clicked inside that we must not miss an anticipation for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter did not stop there. He continued to say, my brothers and sisters, remember, first of all, protos, 
in Greek has the idea of above all, not just first, but above all this. Remember the source of this prophetic word. It comes from God. It's not based on someone's own interpretation. It's not a myth, but it was given by God, carried by the Holy Spirit, such that when false teachers come and put in our minds false teaching, the prophetic word that is in our heart, planted in our hearts, will reject it because it's not from God. Rather, what is from God is from the Lamb that we have been focusing on. It is so important, my brothers and sisters, that we are rooted in the Word and filled with the Spirit of the living God. If not, we fall into the trap that what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 22. He says that you are in error. Some translation put it this way. You are wrong. You are wrong because you do not know the Scriptures and you do not know the power of God. Only when you know the Scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, and when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, then we will receive the divine power that is granted to Peter and to us for life and godliness. We need both, not just one. We need the Holy Scriptures and we need the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit to teach us, to remind us and to clothe us with power to work in us and through us so that we can continue to grow, so that we can continue to grow. One and a half years has passed. Because of COVID, things have changed. For me, I'm sure for you as well, how has it been for you? How has it been for you this one and a half years? It must have been quite a journey. For me, I was prayed to join church as a pastor one and a half years ago. And once I joined, COVID hit. I'm sure it's not my fault. You know. <laughs> but yeah, it hit at that time. You know. And uh, we cannot go for mission trip anymore. No camps, no retreats, no uh, mass gathering. Everything comes to an halt. So I started to ask God. God, besides praying, listening to the young people, you know, and then to sharing what I've learned with them. What else can I do? What else can I do for them? Is there something more before the second coming of Jesus? It was then I realized that, then what is the goal? What is the goal of a shepherd, you know, as a shepherd, a flock, mentor them, disciple them? What is the goal of those flock that God has entrusted to me before the end comes? After some reflections, and even for today's message, I come to the conclusion with this, with this phrase that taken from Colossians chapter 3, verse 9, 16, where it says, Until the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You see, as a pastor, my desire for the church is that until the word of Christ dwell in you richly, the morning star rises in your heart. That is the goal. That is the goal. You see, even as I serve, I realize that there are many needs. Needs, needs to be met. There, there, are many work, there are much work to be done. But the goal is so that, and that, that the Word of Christ may dwell in the church richly. For those who are tired and burdened, remember the Word of God. Remember the revealed Word of God. Find rest for your soul. Come to Jesus and find rest for your soul. But don't stop there until the word of Christ dwell in you richly. For those who are anxious and fearful because of COVID, trust God. Trust God. He loves you. He loves you. And love casts out fear. But don't stop there until the word of Christ dwell in you richly. For those who are facing problems at work, in church, or at home, Ask God to help you. And when you experience a breakthrough, don't stop there until the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. For our loved ones who are not saved or stray from the Lord, continue to reach out to them. You don't need a drama to reach out to them. You can always share Christ with them. Pray for them and trust God to reach out to them as well. And as you continue to do so, do it. 
knowing that you must not stop there until the word of Christ dwell in you richly. When you wonder why the world is getting darker as you read the news, watch the, 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 the news, hold on to the word of God, the spirit of God and anticipate Christ coming, but don't stop there until the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now, my brothers and sisters, what are you looking forward to? Is it for the COVID to be over? Is it for the service to end? Is it so that we can go out and eat again next week? What are you looking forward to? To get married? To buy the next house? To buy a new car? What are you looking forward to? Of course, look forward to all wonderful things that God has prepared for us. But is Christ return something that you look forward to as well? Or have we become so comfortable that we forget that this world is not our home? We will not be here forever. We are only here for a moment. Let's wait for the Lord's coming together. Let's wait for the Lord's coming together. And let's keep growing. Let's keep growing. Let's continue to, do, to, to, to find ways to help us to grow until the word of Christ is formed, is dwell in us. Now, let me ask you again. How many of you do really want to grow in the Lord? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but in your heart, you know. Do you really want to grow in the Lord? If yes, how badly do you want to grow? How badly do you want to grow? If your answer is yes, on-site or online, and you're asking yourself, but how? But how? Remember the review word, what God has spoken to you. Five ways to remember. God's word is precious. Remember the review word. Experience the living word. God is for real. Christ, the living word. It is not just for hate knowledge. You must experience the reality of God in your life. God is for real. God is for real. And anticipate the prophetic word. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for us. He's coming back for us. If you cannot remember... Let me give you one more. Hopefully that will help you remember. R-E-A-D. As you read the Word of God, do what it says. You will grow. You will grow. As you read the Word of God and do what it says, you will grow. You will grow. How do I know? Because I've interacted with godly men and women. And they watch their life. They remember the word of God. They experience the living word. They anticipate the prophetic word. And they do what God says. And I saw how they grow. And it works for me as well. So my brothers and sisters, do you really want to grow? If your answer is yes, but how? Read the word of God and do what He says. You will grow you will grow. Let's pray. Take this moment, just close your eyes and bow your heads before the Lord. Earlier you pray, you talk to the Lord, you say, God, teach me. And the Lord has spoken to you. I don't read my word of God. God spoke to you. Whether it's on site or online, God has spoken. What is it that you need to remember? Write it down before you forget. If your quiet time has been dry and you're saying that, God, no, tell God, God, I want to experience you. I want to experience you. And you have been looking forward for the things of this world. Ask God to help you, give you a new heart, a heart that desire for the morning star to rise in your hearts. For those who are watching online, if you have not come to know Jesus, this wonderful Saviour. I want to encourage you right now, 
to accept Jesus into your life because He loves you, because He loves you. By praying this prayer, you're asking God to come into your life. So for those who are online or even those on site, if today you say, I want to come back to God, perhaps you have strayed from the Lord, today you say, I want to rededicate my life to God, pray this prayer after me. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. Please forgive me. I believe you died from my sin and rose from the dead. And I'll turn from my sin and invite you to come into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name, Amen. Continue to close your eyes and bow your head. And for those who are online or on site, if you have prayed that prayer, those on site, speak to a Christian or a leader or a pastor who would like to journey with you. For those who are online, go to the breakout room later and talk to somebody. We really want to journey with you in this Christian walk with the Lord. You are not alone. The church is here to help you. Allow us to do so. Now, for Christians, perhaps you, know, you want to grow. You want to continue to grow. You are growing, but you want to continue to grow. And today you say, God, help me. Help me. I want to be one who is grounded in the Word and filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to grow until the Word of Christ dwells in me richly. And if this is your prayer, at the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand to God and say, God, I want to grow. Help me. At the count of three, whether it's on-site or online, those online, I cannot see, but God sees. You're not raising your hands to a man. So raise your hand to God and say, God, I want to grow. Help me. Help me. At the count of three, if this is your desire, I want to grow. Help me. At the count of three, you just raise your hand to God. One, two, three. Yes, God sees your hand. God sees your hands. Lord bless you. Oh, Lord bless our church, Lord. Lord bless our church. Lord, you saw the hands of my brothers and sisters, even mine. Lord, we want to come before you humbly and say, God, help us to grow. We want to grow. We want to grow in the Lord. We want to remember. We do not want to forget your word. Continue to help us, Lord. Even as we do all that we can to remember, Holy Spirit, remind us. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters, including myself, Lord, that, that we want to experience you. We want to encounter you. We want to know you. Lord, that from today, this will be a spiritual milestone that even as we move forward, that we will experience you a deeper way. And Lord, give us a heart that anticipate for your coming. Lord, so that the word of Christ may dwell in us richly so that the morning star will rise in our hearts when the day comes. So Lord, honour our prayers as we come before you to honour you. Hear our prayers. And we bless those who raise their hands and even for those who are still thinking, Lord, speak to them. And bless us, Lord, as we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Church, may I get you to rise as we sing the closing song. We cannot sing, you know, out loud, but we can sing with our hearts. So come to God and just tell God, God, you are enough. Jesus Christ is enough. The Word of God, the living Word is enough. I will follow Jesus just like Peter. No turning back, no turning back. Let's worship the Lord with this song. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion. Now there's no 
Christ is enough for us. Everything that we need, Lord, is in you. So, Lord, if as we come before you to acknowledge that indeed we have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us to do so. Help us to always remember your revealed word. Help us to experience your living word. Help us to anticipate the prophetic word that you will come back again for us soon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because Christ alone, alone is enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, there are some words of knowledge. Allow me to read to you. If that means something to you, on site, on online, let someone minister to you and pray for you. Someone has no strength to serve in ministry. God wants you to look to Him and His strength. Someone is seeking for God. God is saying, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. If that means something to you. Someone has long suspended her feelings and the Lord wants to set you free. Picture of, a dry, of dry bones hidden under a bed. Someone is covering up her mistake, feeling guilty. Vision of a woman who has lost her son and trying to move on in her life. Give your burdens to the Lord. Someone has depression. Someone feeling small and weak and you're exploring Christianity. Someone is thinking of returning to his previous toxic workplace for employment. Seek God for wisdom. Someone having pain from the right shoulders to the right thumb and index finger. Someone experiencing stomach brokenness. If that means something to you, for those um, online, you can go into the breakout room and someone will minister to you and pray for you. Allow me to just bless you and as, as we come before God for the benediction. Lord Jesus, thank you so much, Lord, for your word today. They are precious, so precious. So now by the divine power, may we receive by faith all things that we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ who has called us to your glory and excellence. Thank you so much for your great, precious promises. Help us so that, Lord, we will shun evil and pursue righteousness so that the word of Christ may dwell in us richly. Let it be so, Lord, even as we come before you. Thank you, Lord. As we bless you, bless us as we depart from this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, church.